Today I'd like to introduce to you our other great reform educator. This is Friedrich August Wolf. He was born 1759 in Heinrode, Germany. His father was a very great pedagogue and a musician and his mother, she loved literature and she gave him, as he was a child, many poems to learn and to repeat. So it was very loving childhood for him. He loved, since he was a little child, languages. As he enrolled in school with seven years, he could speak already Latin, Greek, French and German. So he uh, came then in school and he continued with his learning of languages. This was in Spain, Italy and uh, so he studied also the history of language. He did read the old historian lit literature about the Greeks and the Romans. And uh, so then, as he was 15, he did read all what he could read and learn in his school. So he decided he liked to go out of school and learn by himself that he can stay at home and go deeper into the whole subject of philology. So this he did then for two years and then he made his uh, diploma and then he went to university in Göttingen where he studied philosophy, pedagogic and history. Special again on languages. So he wollte sehr study special philology, but they didn't have this. But his professor Heine, he have seen in him a very great talented student and he helped him on this. So Wolf, he was allowed to study mostly alone in the library of this university to learn all about the history of the ancient literature. Then by the age of 24, he was invited to become a professor on the university in Halle and uh, there he did teach as a professor philosophy, pedagogic and uh, history. So his lectures were so fascinating that many students uh, came to visit his lectures and he got fame with his lectures. There came already famed philosophers and writers from this time like Humboldt, Goethe and Schiller. And they were so fascinated from his knowledge and from his teaching style that they became close friends. So besides his teaching, Wolf, he wrote many essays and books especially also about pedago pedagogic. So he had very much, uh, he had a very special idea how pedagogic should be, also pedagogic, the style of teaching, of educating. Based on the studies from the ancient philosophers and on his own experiences during his teaching, he learned very much on what is the best way on how to teach others. So, and he wrote a book about the pedagogic is a teaching art. Also, the theory of education. So he writes that unknown words must get defined and must only get used in good sentence and students have then to define themselves unknown words and use them in good sentences. For Wolf was this also very important to include in his lectures eloquence, to teach school students in the eloquence, that they are able to give free speeches. Wolf, he points out in his book about pedagogic that a good teacher have to be both a good scientist and 
a good artist. This is very much close to my heart. He is saying it's a kind of an art on how to teach. Wolf means that when a student is bored in a lecture, then is this not a failure of a student? No, this is a failure of the teacher. In the year 1807, he got an honorary professorship in the Academy of Berlin. So he went there and continued with his teaching of philology and philosophy, especially, again, languages. And in the direction of the importance of humanity. Humanity was for Wolf the main desire in education. He recognized that only a great education brings the society out of the problems of this time period. Only a great education makes the people, the students, more satisfied, more able to do something and carry on in a happy life. In the same book, Wolf points out that this is very important, that the teacher just honors his students. There is no one child evil. It's only the circumstances what makes a student sometimes angry or unhappy. But this is the teacher's job to handle